Question for the DF crew. Are relatively large decreases in frame rates just as jarring above 100 frames per second as they are between 30 to 60 frames per second? I'd say yes. Uh, for reference, like many others, I have experienced the strange phenomenon of feeling temporary but significant visual discomfort when changing from a 60 FPS performance mode to a 30 FPS graphics mode. But recently I was playing Liars of P on my PC at around 175 FPS and then intentionally limited the frame rate to 100. And moving the camera felt like a blurry mess and I had to change the FPS back to unlimited even after trying to get used to 100 FPS for several minutes. Surely 100 FPS is an acceptable frame rate, but it felt truly unacceptable after playing at 175. Mm. Uh, is this phenomenon you've ex is this a phenomenon you've experienced or is there something else going on that I'm not considering? I'm almost worried about getting a 240 hertz monitor and then feeling like playing at only 120 FPS on my TV will look unacceptable. Uh, interesting question, right, Alex? But it's all really about sudden jarring shifts in usually, yeah. updates. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Usually, that's like the thing that I feel is most dis discomforting. Like for me, like uh, the rapid change in frame rate uh, is very visible, and you don't have any acclimation time. A lot of people say, like I think John. Did you say originally, and I forget which game it was, like just start it up in 30 so that you don't have that discomfort period? I can't remember which game oh, it was. Oh, Dragon's Dogma 2. Maybe that right? was it, yeah. I don't know. Yeah, uh, or that, or maybe it was Final Fantasy 16. I can't remember. Like one where you said like if you play it in 30, then it, you oh, can get used to it, maybe. Yeah, Final Fantasy 16 was definitely that way. Yeah, and I feel like that's part of it, like just getting used to it. Uh, but here, I, reading this, this response, though, I didn't think 100 would look so bad. I mean, there is actually a pretty sizable difference in milliseconds per frame there between is. 175. I've, I've done the, I've done the, I've done the sums, Alex. And what do we got? Uh, well, obviously, uh, 100, 100 FPS is going to be 10 milliseconds, 10 milliseconds, right? That's that's a fairly simple. Uh, <laughs> oh yeah, I don't know about that. <laughs> um, but 175 is actually a sizable drop to 5.7 milliseconds. Yeah. So damn. yes, that 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 is almost you know halving the frame time so it's obviously going to be quite different it could the experience would be yeah you know, if you're if you've been experiencing 175 and you basically are effectively doubling your frame time i think you are going to notice it uh, but looking at this question of a 240 hertz monitor uh, obviously if you're going to be halving again i mean you'll be going from like 8.3 milliseconds to um 4.2 oh, effectively I have so another yeah idea. i have another Don't idea know. There's two things. I think display persistence is actually another issue. Oh here. man, you stole my. Th I was <laughs> about to get into that. So right now, if he's using low frame rate compensation <laughs> on a 240 hertz monitor, he's going to see frame doubling on top of whatever LCD persistence blur he's going to get. So right. it's going to be running the game actually at 200 hertz, probably, not 100. I'd imagine. Uh, I I don't know how LFC is done on this monitor. This monitored i have no idea what it is but it could be frame doubling persistence plus lcd persistence blur that is really bothering you too john i don't know that's exactly it i was gonna say it's the thing about increasing frame rates is that this is this is a flat panel problem this is related to sample and hold displays in the way that they work and the way your eyes perceive them in that increasing the frame rate alone doesn't just make it look more fluid it actually reduces the blur the visible blur that your eyes detect which is why if you use 100 versus 175 on a crt the difference will be much less pronounced like you will notice a difference but 100 will look amazing and 175 will look better but also not that much better i think basically flat panels cause this to look a lot worse than it should and it does come down to the sample and whole nature of them if you can combine it with like strobing black frame insertion or something then i think it's much less of an issue but that's exactly why that's what blur busters has always been talking about in terms of getting to a thousand hertz and beyond is like that's when you start to overcome the limitations of sample and hold without any sort of frame insertion or or blanking or strobing or anything like that and yeah, so the more frames you get there, the less blurry it becomes. And I can absolutely attest to that. 240 hertz already uh, looks significantly less blurry in motion. 
And I think the more you go up from there, it just gets sharper and cleaner. So it's less about the frame rate and more back, more about motion clarity. Right. Which is why I think 60 hertz with a mouse on a PC actually does not look good to me. Like it's very blurry on a modern panel. But I swear, 60 hertz, and you would know, Alex, if you play on your CRT next to you at 60 hertz, it looks pretty darn good, doesn't it? Yeah, it, it does. It feels good. It feels significantly better than playing on a flat panel mm-hmm. at 60. And that's kind of what's, that's kind of the bigger issue here. That's more than the difference that he's detecting. It's it's more about that image right. persistence. Well, that's really interesting. I mean, I've done some other calculations here because, you know, he's talking about moving to a four, 240 hertz display. And, you know, the difference, you know, let's say you're on 165 at the moment, although I'm curious what display he does have if he's playing at 175. Yeah. yeah. Well, so my LG ultra wide here that I have in vertical mode now actually supports 175. And it's one okay. of the few monitors that does that. Wow. Oh, I said, I said LG and both the monitor and the TV behind me. I see on that now. <laughs> to respond to it. And they're listening to me. Um, oh, no, there's text printing on screen. Stop. I, I, I turn off all that stuff. Every I should turn that time. off. Yeah. LG wow. go off. LG go home. <laughs> That's crazy. That really is. <laughs> but yeah, talking about the, the, the frame time differentials, I mean, it's the sliding scale and the higher the refresh rate, the lower the difference is going to be. So, you know, we're looking at 165 here. That's um, six millisecond per frame. 240 is like 4.2. So it's not, you know, a gigantic difference. 175, 5.7. So, you know, it's, it's, you're getting very, very tight at that point. Mm-hmm. Um, but I guess, tight. you know, that's a different issue to what you're discussing in terms of motion clarity where, you know, yeah. the refresh rate is just obviously a uh, big part of a different it. thing in terms yeah. of overall clarity. Um, yeah, so I'm not really sure how to answer this question really, but it looks as though it is a, a display issue as opposed to a game frame rate issue, possibly. I mean... Yeah. I'd hope so. I, I think it's more about the way it's displaying it. Okay. Yeah. Fair enough. That's why, man, it just reminded me of what's the thing that NVIDIA thing called that they're working on to couple Pulsar? VRR and Black. Yeah, Pulsar. Have we? I feel like we haven't seen any movement on that in a while. I haven't I'm seen that. They had a demo in London that I went to, and it was very good. <laughs> I need. I need to try that myself. Yeah. Well, by the way, there was a. What's the name of that TV tech YouTube channel by Vincent? I forget his name. HDTV, HDTV test. test. Yeah, there was a. <laughs> we both know. <laughs> yeah, sorry. Um, the there was a uh, video from him describing a, a OLED monitor that will be coming out that potentially reduces OLED flickering um, with VRR, like darker scene flickering that John has talked about before. But then he yeah. described what the difference was, and it made me disappointed. And apparently the difference with this OLED monitor is that if you turn on a mode that will reduce potential VRR flicker, all it does is it reduces the VRR range to be short, to be smaller. So yeah, you'd start lame. getting V-Sync then at some point instead of VRR. Um, I don't know if that's a good benefit to the end user necessarily because you're trading oh. Judder then for, you know, it's another persistence issue. So it's kind of not what you want from a VR screen. No, I wouldn't want that at all. So it sounded it actually sounded like a really bad idea to me. I was surprised uh, by it, but that's what it was. So if you read about that, know that's what it is, apparently. 